This tutorial is part of a YouTube playlist. You can access this and many more of the tutorials in this course. If you do like this YouTube playlist and you want to access the whole course, you can do on Udemy. The link to the YouTube playlist and YouTube course is in the video description. Similar to the approach we took with the Docker Compose file, where we separated the sensitive information, in that case, information regarding the username and password for the database into a separate file. We want to try and perform the same type of actions when building our application. We don't want to leave any sensitive information within the code. We want to manage it slightly differently. So let me introduce you to environment variables, using environment variables within our application to separate the sensitive information, move it from our code base into a separate space so that we can load it in and allow it access to our application, but in a more secure way. So imagine this is our computer again, we have hardware, we have the operating system. Now we can ask the operating system to manage some data for us, which we can describe as environment variables. So what we're doing here, sensitive information that we want to use within our project, usernames, passwords, and other sensitive information, we can store it and have it being managed by the operating system in what we describe as environment variables. So whenever the project needs access to these, to these environment variables, we'll just go ahead and program that within our application so it can then access those environment variables. So by doing this, the actual project doesn't necessarily have um, within the code base any sensitive information. So if we are sharing this code around with other people, of course, we're not then going to be sharing these environment variables, these, this sensitive information, which adds a layer of security to our project. We don't necessarily need to do it for this project, our development project, but it is just good practice and something that we should typically follow. So let's set this up in our project. As per usual, there are multiple ways of configuring environment variables. We're going to be installing the python.env package. So let's go ahead and do that first. A quick reminder that we are installing a package. So let's make sure that we update the requirements file. This is going to get a little bit difficult if you're not familiar with the terminal, but we always need to remember where we are. So at this point, we don't have to, but I'm just trying to show this manual approach. We're currently inside of our FK commerce folder. So potentially we're going to need to change directory, come out to the root directory in order to update the requirements file. Again, we don't necessarily need to because we can do it from pretty much anywhere, but uh, let's go ahead and now pip freeze. It just makes the process easier. So let's go ahead and update the requirement requirements file. So we should now have the .env uh, package that we've just installed. Okay, so now we want to make this resource available within our project. Now we're using, if you remember, we're using this battery approach. So we only need to define it once and then potentially we can then utilize it throughout the whole application. So let's take a look at how we're going to do that. So let's go into the core, uh, actually the FK commerce. Inside of there, we have core. Inside of there, we have the the initialization file. At the moment, we're just creating an instance of our application. So what we can do here is let's from, uh, from, 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 from dot env, uh, let's import, import uh, the load dot env, yes. Okay, so let's uh, load up the package that we've just installed. And then what we're gonna need to do now is load environment variables from a file. So let's go for load dot env function. Okay, and now what we need to do is create a .env file. So within the FK commerce directory, our root project directory, let's go ahead and create a new file called .env. Okay, that's where we're going to place any environment variables. Now, this is going to hold a whole host of different variables, um, mainly the database setup, um, a little bit about uh, Flask, uh, the Flask setup. So those are the type of environment variables that we're going to set. We're not going to define any for now. We'll get to that point. Um, but that's our EMV file set up. So we can now access our environment variables throughout our whole application. So this is starting to turn into a shopping bag of things. 
when we go ahead and run our app, we're creating a new instance of our app. So what's happening there, we're calling this function, which is here, we're calling uh, this function here, but by running this function, in actual fact, the load.env will also be loaded, which will make this available to our app so that we can use this within our app in certain places where we want to load environment variables. Let me show you an example. Let's just uh, add, for example, print. Hello there. Okay, just to show you this, my point. So let's go back into here. Let's go ahead and run the program. Could not import app. Okay, okay. So we're in the wrong directory. So this is a common problem that we're going to have because we keep moving into the project folder and out of the project folder. So if you are receiving this error, it means that if you check, you're not actually inside the project folder. So I was contemplating just saying, let's just stay in this directory, do everything from here, and we would have to root into the project. Uh, but we're not going to. So let's go into the project folder. Let's run the command again. And you can see that this time the project has run, but you can also see hello. So that's just giving you a, a visual idea that when we run our application, although we've only specified to uh, run this function by importing the core, remember this module, we're running everything inside of this file. And one of those um, things that we're doing is loading up .env so that we can access um, any of our environment variables. Obviously, we showed you an example there, the fact that the hello um, was printed out because this is also being initiated when we initiate our Flask project. So this is going to provide us that modular approach um, because we can start to load things in which the application can then utilize. So what we're going to see next is that we're going to start to import our configuration for our project.